the 11th grade AP English class. They have started The Scarlet Letter by Nathaniel Hawthorne, um, along with reading the book. Uh, to start it off, Ms. Simmons had the students create their own letter that was representative of them. So someone could do C for creative. Um, and then they got up and they explained their letter and they decorated it. And for extra credit, they could uh, pin the letter to their shirt and wear it to classes. Um, and this would help them better understand uh, Hester, the main character of the book, uh, the, her punishment of wearing the letter A on her chest. Um, also, Ms. Um, Fisher's Alex, biology. Question, question, yes. question about that as well. Did any of the students actually wear it? And what, do you know anything about what their experience was? Yeah, they they did. I saw quite a few students wearing them. Um, you know, it, it's funny because she didn't make us make my class do it last year. But uh, the people who did do it this year, I know they felt a little awkward, a little embarrassed, even though their letters didn't have negative connotations, just like having something presented on them that was out of the ordinary kind of was odd, um, was different. So, and I, so I think, I think her, her lesson worked. I think they understood better. Okay, great. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Um, so then in Ms. Fisher's biology class, uh, the ninth graders and 10th graders who are in the class are working on a stop motion film um, to show the phases of cell division and the specific phases of mitosis. And the contemporary politics class finished their, just finished their unit on local politics. Um, so to better understand the inner workings of the town, uh, we held a mock mayoral election, which was a new project to this class. Um, this project kind of took on a life of its own outside of class, but in the classroom, each candidate had to create their platform. Um, we created signs and websites, and each candidate shared an opening statement with the school and we held a debate that was monitored by Mr. Bettino. Um, this is a month-long project, and the voting was held this Tuesday. And Alice Alex won. To... <laughs> <laughs> uh, just two questions. One is, if, if, if it would be available, I would love to see those films that they're making of the cell division and mitosis, if those would yeah. be available at whatever point they're done. I'd be fascinated to see that. And as well, if we could get a link to the websites of the mayoral candidates, I would love to see the websites that they created and what their platforms were. Sure. I think we can do that. Thank you. I'll make note of that. Um, and so the monthly survey that Mr. Bettino and I sent out, uh, it was very similar to last month. We asked students what events they participated in and what they enjoyed about them. And then we also provided a space for them to list any thoughts or concerns. Um, but in addition, if you remember last year, we asked about uh, activities, after school activities that they might want to see. We asked about clubs they would might, uh, they, they might like to see for next year because the, the time to propose those clubs to you for funding um, is coming up. So a few of those ideas were to have a tennis club. Uh, a student mentioned that, you know, we have tennis courts in the rackets, but really only do maybe a three week unit in gym. Um, a club for the school paper, because currently there is a communications class and it is held during the period that band and orchestras held and chorus. So that limits a lot of people who can participate. I know it's something that I personally have had trouble with um, being involved in that class, but then also in music, a dodgeball club and a coloring club. That's all, thank you. Well, Mrs. Smith had a tennis club. So hmm. if she comes around substituting, yeah. you can ask yeah. her how she did that. Thank you, Alice. Thank you. And just to piggyback off those clubs, I mean, it's one of the next steps if the students are interested in, in Mr. Patino and then recommend, I would just do a sign ups because if one or two students asked, you want to make sure it's just not one or two students. Or you, want right. to, you want to, if you're going to pitch the idea to have more clubs because we're all about social connection in this district, we want to make sure that there's a, a need for it, right? Mm -hmm. Good. Thanks. Superintendent update? All right. Just a couple um, uh, updates or new things, excuse me. Um, one, we uh, just got word this week that uh, grant I put in for for a pre-K grant. 
uh, we were awarded. So $80,000 um, annualized every year on top of our pre-K. Nice. Uh, if you remember, <laughs> we were $348,000 every year for 10 years straight, and there was no increase. Um, so well, we got word this week that we, we got that to add to our totals. So that helped out immensely because the district right now sinks about $120,000 into uh, into pre-K, and you know, this will help uh, for the future with that. So fantastic to hear that. And same week, I also heard that we uh, – Put another grant in for what's called an energy manager from NYSERDA. Uh, this is different than most grants. Grants are usually, you apply for a grant, you write it, there's an application deadline, they go through the applications and they tell you if you want. This one was, as you, as you submitted it, they started to roll them out already. And it was a very kind of quick turnaround. We were the first one in the state to put in because of the first application that he had. So it was kind of like a little surprise with it, I think. Uh, but this energy manager will do uh, a couple things. Uh, this allows to put somebody in a position for 14 months, uh, fully funded uh, by NYSERDA, um, which will allow us to look at solar projects, geothermal projects, electric vehicle projects. It will also allow us to look at our maintenance schedules to make sure that we're, we're efficient with our lighting and gas systems, our turnoffs and turn-on systems. Um, it will also allow us to... Uh, piggyback up our building project a little bit and help uh, the, the project manager and maintenance to make sure everything's going as planned. And the position will also push into some classroom as well to talk about energy, uh, new green energy, and you know push that into sciences and technology courses as well. So it's kind of a really kind of robust position, uh, but um, we're pretty sure everything's a go. We wanted to get in the doctor for this month. Uh, so it, when we do get the final word, which I think will be tomorrow or Monday, we can push through and post the position for two weeks and have it ready for next year or for the beginning of the year. So kind of a little excited about that. Um, I also talked to a company called Energy uh, Clean Watts America. They're an international company that does all solar, um, geothermal, and uh, electric vehicles. And they're going to talk about putting it together and help us put together a comprehensive plan. Obviously, the money they make is if we go with them, they would get the energy. But the bottom line is we need to look at all this. So this kind of piggybacks off of uh, this grant uh, as well. So kind of excited about that a little bit. Um, learning 2025, so you need a quick update on that. Um, Mr. Bertino and his group from the academies met with the Baldwin superintendent and also some support staff. They got some great information from them, uh, asked some questions that were well needed. I'm going to set up a visit to go down and, and see them. So it seems like we're, we're, pretty, we're, we're in pretty good shape in terms of moving forward with the academies. Don't know when that rollout will be yet, but it, uh, things are moving in a positive direction that way. Um, we also solidified our summit. We have 32 people going to our summit from, from our district. That's faculty and staff. And we are going to talk about those four committees that we're on in terms of the Port Chile graduate and some residencies. We're also going to talk about um, the badging systems, the academies, and also social emotional learning. And so there'll be about eight people on each committee, and we'll be able to kind of uh, – Get from all across the district input and information to see where we go with these initiatives. So uh, a, a lot of good things uh, happening in that direction. Um, well, I'll give you a little recap. I went to, uh, if you remember, I went to Denver with a group of superintendents uh, back in October, and there were some vendors there who helped put on the, the, the uh, conference. And there was two of them there that talked specifically about this speaker system in classrooms where students, in a lot of cases, can't hear the student, the teachers talk. They get lost a little bit in some of the fray. And uh, come to find out, these two companies are in about 8,000 school districts out of the country, out of 16,000. So half the school districts, these companies are in with these um, speaker systems in the classroom. And what we did is we, we took a couple to just try them and put them in classrooms to see what teachers thought. And we put them in how many classrooms, Jen, total? We're almost, have been to almost all of them. The almost elementary. All the classrooms in the elementary school, because that's more so down there. Mm -hmm. And tested them all. And the feedback from them, pretty much? The feedback has been fabulous. So this is what the system is. Um, just to have you guys understand what we've been using. Uh, Mrs. Uh, Ms. Rapp, who is our speech pathologist down at uh, the elementary school, well, all over now. We have been using FM transmitters for quite some time for students with disabilities, especially those um, that have autism or ADHD and so on. Um, they're kind of bulky. I imagine that you've used them before, Keith. Um, yep. The student wears this device, and then the teacher has to wear this device on their lapel. Yep. Um, this is a pendant. All right, the teacher can move around it, one button click, 
and they're hooked right into the system. Everything comes paired. Um, we have gotten tremendous. There's a little PowerPoint in your in the board doc, so feel free to peruse that. But overall, the teachers have been very, very excited about the use of this um, of this device. I went and picked it up so I could bring it here tonight, and the teacher was like, "Oh, I can't use it for my last group," and I was like, "I'll bring it back. I promise, so you can use it." Um, and I'm talking teachers from kindergarten is where I uh, stole it from today, all the way up to um, the fifth grade. Love it. They have noted that the students are more engaged. Um, they are paying attention more, just focused within the classroom. So it's been tremendous um, growth for them. One thing that these come with is also the microphone. So the kids can use these microphones in small groups. What they've noted is that even our quietest friends cannot wait to get up there and, and use it. So that's been very exciting um, for the students. So um, we're moving from a system where it's kind of bulky. We still can use individual systems for students if necessary, because we have found, we've found one student in particular that's using the FM, um, the individual one already, that is now, um, uh, they, yes, they use the whole classroom one, but they're finding that they still need that individualized. This plugs right into our system, um, so the teacher can only, only have to wear the one pendant still, but it still works for them. Um, what's positive is that these pendants also for our special ed teachers, so they're circulating classrooms. Um, all they need to do is they walk into the classroom, they hold down the button, they pair it with that, with that uh, transmitter, done. And then they're fully involved within the classroom. So they're actually been very easy to use, which is the biggest step with using these devices. Catherine and spent a lot of time running around making sure people know how to use them. Um, but uh, these have been so easy and kind of effortless and there's been some great reviews for it. But let's talk about where it's money, because they do cost money. So in the PowerPoint, um, you'll see the breakdown of cost. So I have, I would like to get these for all of our full classrooms um, at the elementary level. So this would not be within your a, um, AIS classrooms, speech classrooms, the smaller group settings. They're finding that they don't, aren't as effective in, in those settings. But what I would like to do, um, if the, the cost for the RedCat system, which is the big speaker, this pendant mic, and this mic. Two mics. Two, okay, two mics, all right is um, uh, it's about 1500 all right? So I want to get those for the majority of the classes. I want one of these sets to be used um, to include the two flex mics and one of these. That would be strategically placed one per grade level for the COTA sections. Remember, though, that you can pair these with anyone. I just need the extra mic. Um, those are about 17,000? Um, 1700. 1700, I apologize. Um, the extra money goes to me. The, then there's a one that's specifically designed for the gyms. Okay, those are larger. Um, those are about 1,900 um, for those. If I got one of those, I got eight of the double systems for COTA uh, classrooms, 16 of the standard systems. Um, it's about $38,460. The state um, during COVID gave us ARPA, you know, the fun ARPA. They gave ARPA, but 611 money. So those are my grants monies for um, students with disabilities K through 12. We got an extra stipend of $47,224. That would cover plus some as we replenish some of our other materials for testing and so on. Um, we can use that. That money could come from there. It's a one time um, use. We have to use it or lose it um, by the end of the school year. So I, you know, I'm proposing that we um, we purchase these devices because we've gotten such great reviews. What's the shelf life on them, John? What's well, they because they're fairly simple. Um, you're looking; they indicated like five to ten years, but you know, with technology, you know, it, it's very, very simple. Um, what they've perfected with this system, though, is the the high frequency projection um, of the sound. So, let's see what happens when you talk louder. You lose the actual uh, how lose you say words. The intonation and articulation. Yeah, so. Actually, when you think you're speaking louder, it's easier to understand, and it's actually not. It's worse. Correct. They noted so some. You know, you see, yeah. Yeah. They yeah. noted some data, which I thought was very cool. Um, they noticed 43 percent less off-task behavior. This is from the company. I did not do that research. 72% um, fewer teacher redirections because they're hearing it clearly across the entire room, and a decrease in teacher absenteeism. And this is. And at first, I was like, "Why is that?" But um, Sharon Taus brought up a great point. She goes, my voice was less fatigued because I wasn't projecting all day long. And it was just a, I'm talking at this level and everyone's hearing it and I don't have to yell across the room while people are doing group work and so on. So those are all some positives that I hadn't thought of when I, we initially looked at purchasing these. 
So this grant money is, is very earmarked targeted, like it's a subdivision of ARPA, and you can only use it for certain things. This fits it. Great. So it kind of no general fund cost and no extra cost from you know our fund balance or anything. Mm -hmm. So and it's kind of a win-win. I'm glad we're able to get around to every class. I didn't know you did that. I, I just need pretty fast. Mm -hmm. Now you, at least we have some good feedback. Yeah. There are some teachers are that are concerned about the feedback because they hear themselves. Um, you know how we don't like hearing ourselves on uh, like on audio and so on. Um, but they noted that it's such a benefit to the kids that you know we'll get over it, as one once said. <laughs> All right, thanks. I propose it for next month if you see it. Come over to it. Mm -hmm. it's a little more detail. We got to do a little negotiation. Because I'll bring the used car sales. I mean, the more, the more you purchase, Dr. Nick. That's right. That's right. Okay. I'm all set. Okay. Thank you. All right. So um, we have to pull out the minutes because I wasn't here. Do we have enough people to vote on that? If you only have two people, don't. Three. Three. No. Hi. No. Oh, you can't. Yeah, right. I went two, so you couldn't. We can go for the next one. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, so then table. Table the minutes. Table the minutes and we'll have a consent, consent agenda for the rest. Do we have a motion? Make a motion. <laughs> Vote. <laughs> okay. Yep. All right. So we'll start with bills. Does anybody have any questions about the bills? Um, I do, as usual. <laughs> yep. Okay. Uh, 62658, Montgomery Department of Social Services is um, $10,000, and I just wanted to be reminded, what are we giving them that much money for? Um, can you hear me, Mark? Yep, I can. Okay. Um, that's for a special ed placement, and that's a maintenance charge that the, the county charges us monthly for that placement. Okay, thank it's, you. It's residential. And then I had one other, um, there are two charges for Star and Strand Transportation. Um, uh, one is for $5,800, the other is $5,200. And I was wondering what they provide for us. That is transportation for a student who is residentially placed in Albany, but the family resides in our district, and that's transportation to their program in Albany. Okay, and who, um, uh, um, is that just for one month? Yes. Yep. It's it like sixty thousand for the year. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I guess I, the question that occurred to me is why are we uh, contracting mm -hmm. that out to someone rather than providing it ourselves? It was capacity. It was our capacity to do it. There, we don't have anybody because it's in Albany. So the the child's residence is in the in Albany because they're residentially placed and they are um, and their placement is in Albany. Sure. So when we, we talk about every year with Wayne about how we can provide that transportation, it was just a human capacity issue. Plus you need a specialized bus. I see. Okay, thank you. I was just curious because it seemed like an awful lot of money for transportation in one month and all. Uh, just wanted really to get cool. it cleared up. Thank you. We negotiated that down yep. just to let you know. <laughs> For the first bid, and we were able to get it down mm -hmm. even mm -hmm. a little bit further. Yep. Any other questions, Mark? Pardon? Any other questions? Nope, that's it. Thank you. Okay. Yep. Um, Treasurer's report, any questions there? No? Um, I, I just have one comment to make. <laughs> um, it's just startling to me that there's such a difference in the interest rate between a couple of our accounts. If you go to the last, the last account in the, in the report, which is a money market account, the interest is two tenths of 1%. And if we look at all the other accounts, there, most of them are about two hundredths of 1%. And it's just startling to me that there would be that that much difference, and also that the rates are still so low when the Fed's been raising interest rates regularly over the last period of time. And I'm just—I know I've said I wouldn't 
go on with this, but I, I just, it was just startling to me, and I, I think it's, uh, it's just hard to understand. Yeah, Mark, that last page that you're looking at, the um, New York class money market account, that yep. one actually has really, really good interest rates right now. So you'll see in October, I moved 4.5 million into that account and it almost got $10,000 um, in interest. And for the month of November, it's like 13,000. So I'm gonna keep that amount in there so that it can get the interest because NPT has nothing. Yeah, that's, that, that's what that's I know. That's what a lot of the other schools like are doing. We're actually right getting now. something. <laughs> yeah. So thank you for doing that, Leah. I think it really is a, is a great, great thing that you're doing. So thank you. Reserve plan? Yeah, that's just a yearly plan that we have to put through and get approved. Pretty much the same as we've had. Mm -hmm. uh, so no, nothing's really changed from last year. Yeah. Any questions? Um, is that number E? Yes. 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 I do have, I, I just do have one question on page three. Um, there's a note that said the board will discuss the need to create a new capital reserve fund, a new equipment reserve fund since both have been sufficiently funded as of June 22. And I'm just confused about why we have to do new ones if they're sufficiently funded. They, so um, because they were already funded at the maximum level um, that was stated when they were created. So we cannot put any more money into them. So in order to create a new one, well, first the board would have to decide they want to do that. And then the public would have to vote on that in May. Again. So what happens, Mark, is they when you say eight hundred thousand dollars reserve, you can only put eight hundred thousand in the life of it. You can't like eight hundred thousand, take right. four hundred thousand away and then go back up to eight hundred thousand. So it's reached its peak. So it's kind of a safeguard that the state has put in to constantly look at your reserves and make sure it gets out to the public that you're putting that money in and to the Board of Education. So it's kind of checks and balances. So this year we'll probably uh we will we will recommend uh, a reserve for the capital project and also probably equipment as well because equipment will reach a certain peak too. It already has. We had the, we right. set up the equipment reserve for 500,000. We've already put it in 500,000. It's not like we've spent it. We just have it and we can allocate one. Even if we don't touch it in a couple of years, it'll at least be there. All right. So this would be something that we would be discussing leading up to the budget vote. So that would be along with the budget yes. vote. Is that right? Yeah. Be with the finance committee. Yep. And it will bring it to the board. Okay, I just uh, I, I just was confused about that. Thank you. Any questions on the school tax collector's report? Yeah. Yeah. I'll pass. How about this? <laughs> You're out of question. You're at three. <laughs> Schoharie County school tax recapitulations. Can I give a quick explanation or? It's the same as the Montgomery County one. It's yeah. just a different format. It just shows what we collected and what we didn't collect, and what's going back to the county. And then they collect on our behalf and then give us the money. So $133 or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah there's <laughs> nothing. <laughs> we have really not many properties in Stowberry. OK, how about the upstate cerebral palsy contract? Same as usual, right? Um, actually, it's a new one. Oh, it's a new student um, that we um, was having difficulty in placements. We had to move to a residential placement. Um, they were six months without a program. We provided tutoring services and, and uh, related services ser related services um, to the student outside of school. Um, we were able to find a great spot, and we just had a meeting, and the student is doing fantastic and is already making tremendous growth right. in safety. So it's been a good move. Okay, the MOA for Q's, the $22 an hour morning. Years ago when the morning program started, mm -hmm. uh, I think it was, we tracked it back, I think it was started from grant funds, but it was never actually put into, formally into the contract, like the position itself. Hmm. So you know how we have uh, curriculum, $30 or whatever. Right, oh, right, This was right. never put in. It was in an MOA, though. No, it was never put into the MOA. Really? Was, yeah, it was Because I thought it was a contract. separate, actual separate one. Yeah, yeah, so it wasn't. Okay. So we wanted to make sure it's on the books, yep. you know, officially. Mm -hmm. So they came and talked about it this year about could we increase it? And, uh, you know, it wasn't part of the negotiations, but right. we were looking, we were both looking through the contract. There was nothing, 
went back to look at MOAs and everything. So it was established, but it was never created formally. So you might have had I swear agreement, I remember seeing that all signed and everything. Okay. Never yep. approved here. And I think it was about five years ago, maybe six years ago yep. when we started. Yep. So we just have officially in the books. We've been running it, but mm -hmm. so. Okay. Surplus? Any questions with that? Yeah, I do. I have a question. Um, <laughs> normally, the surplus is just kind of, you know, pencils and paper and stuff like that. But this time we have a tractor and a four-wheel snowblower. I was just wondering, you know, how, how do we assure that we get a reasonable price for these? Because these are not small items. These are older items that go in auction. Okay. They'll go in the auction. So they are, they are auctioned off. Yes. Got to surplus them first and put them in the auction. Okay, thank you. Okay, the comprehensive district diploma. Uh, we went through this, as we said, as um, you guys asked us to last month. We went and looked at a couple other programs, and um, we wanted to readjust it to 240 40 hours, mm -hmm. which pretty much equates to credit hours, how many hours you'd have to actually put Same. in yeah. to get that amount. So we did adjust it a tad, and it now kind of quasi-represents how you get the credits. Mm -hmm. That kind of makes sense? Yep. Uh, but, and, and we talked, you know, last month somebody said, can they do, a, you know, just a credit? But we, as we talked and talked to other uh, school districts, this is a comprehensive diploma, not pieces. Right. So you're going to get this diploma, not just a credit. So that's so a specific it. name, right? Comprehensive Correct. Yep. for this specific criteria. Yes. So when a student does all this, they'll now re, you know, get more credits from their right. and also get a special distinction on their diploma, yep. which hopefully will help them get into college and mm -hmm. things in the future. In the meantime, we give back to the community. So it's now adjusted to 240 hours over four years. So just about an hour and a quarter a week. Mm -hmm. All right, how about the SEQRA resolution? This is um, part of kind of a, the building project, but we're using the ARPA funds for the building project. Mm -hmm. And when you do any building project, the ARPA funds, you just have to put the secret yep. resolution in. So these are really going to be for the windows down at the sixth grade wing. So if you remember, the part of the building project was windows and also air handlers. So we decided to do the windows and ARPA and all the air handlers for the building project. Mm -hmm. Okay. So do we have a motion to accept? Make a motion. Thanks. Mark? Second. Thank you. Second. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we move on to personnel. So we first have uh, retirement. Yes, we have two retirements the there. And, yep, and Luke Bay. Yes. Yep. So we're going to Could I just be yeah, just consent and get Yep. Before we go on, before people, the meet again, so I'm just putting this in now so people just don't disappear. I would love to see uh, the microphones and equipment that uh, that you know we would that was, that Jen was talking about because I couldn't see it. it. Just before you leave, Jen, if you could just kind of get in front of the no camera problem. and show it to me, just so I could. No, I'll thank be right you. at your house. Okay. <laughs> Okay. So can we do a consent agenda? Yes. yes. Okay. So do we have a motion for consent agenda? I'll make a motion. Do you have a second? Second. Thank you. Okay, so we have retirement of Deb Hillier. Right? Yep, Deb Hillier and, and Linda Faye. Faye. Two obviously just extremely valuable teachers that we've had and put in over 60 years, close to 70 years. So yeah. we'll thank them. We'll have a special event for them at the end of the year. So congratulations to both, obviously. On um, the BOCES sublist. Just not data sublist. Yeah. Yep. I'll make no. a cheesecake. <laughs> <laughs> the appointment of a substitute driver. Thank goodness, as yeah. they keep coming, so good things. Yeah. And um, the substitute cleaner. Yep, same thing. The coach. And very lucky. Will Coombs. Yes, JV. JV, we had a res month. resignation last month, and Will was able to step in as our new PE teacher down in elementary. Yep, so we have a resignation and then the, the acceptance of a new student mentor, same? Yes. Correct. Yes. Right. Yep. And then uh, point the drama volunteers. Yep. yep. And the bottom is a new position, which is the um, the grant manager. That I, uh, excuse me, the energy manager that I just. Talked okay, about. I didn't have. You that might have here. to refresh your screen. Yeah. Okay. Just refresh it. Keep losing my own thing. Okay. 
once we get the official okay from NYSERDA, and um, we have to apply, I already did, through civil service to make sure it's up on the system, we will then post it. I just wanted to get the approval now. Obviously, that wouldn't happen if we didn't get all that, yep. but we have the approval to move forward with the position if everything was in place. Okay, yep. So if it happens to be an internal person, we will make sure that's built that they don't lose seniority and they get back their position after the 14 months. Same with somebody internal. Do we have somebody who would get oh, that Oh, I don't know. Okay. Yeah, we'll have to see. So, okay. just want to get everybody in. We'll let people know that. If somebody's going to want to get the spot. Okay. Sure. Okay, so do we have a motion to accept? I want to make a motion to accept. Mark? Second. Second. Thank you. Okay. Do we have any old business? New business? We need to go into recess. <laughs> okay, we have, we, have we have a motion to adjourn. A motion to adjourn. <laughs> but not yet. That has to come up. I'm fine. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for coming. Good holiday. We don't see you. Uh, see me? We ended so you can study for your math. <laughs> 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 <laughs>